teacher. She is doing the level three elective connect with storytelling from the pathways dynamic leadership manual or path and the this speech is to fulfill the level three elective in connecting with storytelling so please welcome nagam with her speech strength in being gentle nagam Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and most welcome guests. I want to start out with a quote that I heard back in the first shutdown. Don't remember who the uh, person that said it was, but it stuck with me. And the quote is, you prove just how weak you are by being harsh to others. It's gentleness that requires strength. I'm going to repeat it. You prove just how weak you are by being harsh to others. It's gentleness that requires strength. The whole webinar was talking about being in the workplace and treating others and how you treat others. It stuck with me and it reminded me of a story of something that happened to me years ago. I was a beginner teacher. My very first year of teaching just got my certification. I was so excited. I was planning the whole summer to getting started in my classroom, getting my lesson plans done, all the activities, setting up my classroom. I don't know if you've ever been in this situation, Tamika's not here to tell me or to tell you, it's amazing. It's an exciting feeling to get your classroom started. And the year started and with all my enthusiasm and energy, I got mixed up in a lot of different other things. It wasn't just teaching third grade. I started taking on a whole lot of other jobs. I wanted to fundraise for the school. It was working for a private school that needed a lot of help. And instead of the school paying me, I started doing a lot of things to help the school. So I started fundraising. I even got my husband involved in it. He started selling breakfast in the morning and we've got a vending machine for the school just to help out. You know, enthusiastic, wanna help my students out. And I got involved in uh, teaching a lot of different classes. I was asked to teach another reading class and I took it, you know, I have third grade, I'm still teaching that, but that wasn't enough. So I took on another thing and another thing. And I took on one more thing. This was a private school, remember? So they taught Islamic studies and I'm passionate about that. It was really important to me that our children learn their, their uh, religion. And I saw that some of the girls I was, that were being taught, some of the Islamics, weren't really coming back to the classroom happy. I spent a lot of energy and a lot of time working with all of my students to make sure that they not only receive the right education, but they only also have the right environment. And so weeks went on and I see these kids coming back to me and they're not themselves. So I thought, you know what? What's another thing to take on? Let me teach that too. So I started teaching Islamics as well. Don't ask me where the time is coming from. I have no idea. I think I wasn't sleeping at all at that time. But there was a time where I think I stepped on somebody's toes without knowing. This, there's this guy who was an administrator in the, in the school building whose daughter was also in my class. Now this child was struggling a whole lot. She was struggling in reading and math. And I tried to reach out to the family several times. I talked to the parent, both parents worked in the building. So I tried to talk to them, you know, reaching out, talking, conversations, nothing happened. I wanted to have a, a conference with the parents. They were not responsive at all. And they're, one day, um, I think I pushed the button too far when that 
administrator, the male, uh, the father, came over and said, um, why are you teaching Islamics? This is not your specialty. You need to stick to your, your job. I said, the director approved it, the, the principal approved it, so I'm working and my children seem happy. My students are happier now, they're okay. They're learning everything they're getting from me, they're getting from me and they seem to get along. So I kept going and he persisted and I persisted. I wouldn't give up this because I see that my students are benefiting. So days went on, weeks went on, and I still, I could talk to the guy about everything else, but his daughter's education. So I decided to write up a letter. I wrote it, I put it in his desk, on his desk. When he came back, he was angry. He came right to my door. I was standing at the door, my students were all behind me in the classroom, and he started yelling at me at the top of his voice. All teachers came out of their classrooms, they were looking, they were trying to find out what's going on. I stood there. I was so surprised at myself. I didn't know what I was going to do, but I just stood, I listened, and I kept repeating myself. If you have a question, go see the director of the building. This is something that the principal knows about, the director knows about, and I was so surprised. I didn't know I was going to do that, but I was looking back, looking at my students, I wanted to make sure they were okay because there's a guy yelling at their teacher and I was fine. So he, st he started walking away from the classroom. I had, a, I had somebody pulled up in my classroom and I ran to the director's office and I said, he's coming and he is yelling, he is mad. And I was still fine. <laughs> He came right behind me and he started yelling at me right in the main office in front of everybody else. Thank goodness for that because everybody, you know, I didn't need any evidence. They saw exactly what happened. He walked into the director's office. I walked into the principal's office. I started crying and shaking all over and he got fired. And I felt at that point, I did what's right for my students and I stood my ground. I was caring for my students most. I was, uh, respectful and he was not and I think he was the one that showed weakness and I showed strength back to you Mr. Toastmaster all right thank you Naga so excellent speech sometimes doing the right thing is not that easy but you did in this circumstance and fantastic so at this point I would recommend that folks feel free to reach out to Nagam send a a message to her, you know, providing some feedback to her, what you liked about the speech or what you think, you know, maybe next time could, could help her out as well. And please note that we are going to have a more formal evaluation as well. Okay. <clears throat> oh, uh, Dan, we, we take a yeah. one minute break for the evaluator and also anyone else to give feedback to Naga. Okay. Thank you. So, Feel free to, to send something along to Nagam. 